द विक्टोरियन नोवल 1832-1901. The 19th century was the great age of English novel. This was partly because this essentially middle class form of literary art was bound to flourish increasingly as the middle classes rose in power and importance partly because of the steady increase of the reading public with the growth of reading libraries and development of publishing in the modern sense and other phenomena which accompanied this increase and partly because the novel was the vehicle best equipped to present a picture of life lived in a given society against a stable background of social and moral values by the people who were recognizably like the people encountered by readers and this was the kind of picture of life the middle class readers wanted to read about the novel like the medieval fable is what northrop fire calls a law mimetic literary form i repeat that's what the northrop fire calls the law mimetic literary form the purely escapist impulse to read about high aristocratic world of ideal gallantry and beauty is as a lacking in the typical victorian novel reader as the desire to see the fundamental problems of human experience projected imaginatively and symbolically through the presentation of great figures acting out their destiny on the grand scale the victorian novel readers did want to be entertained and in sense he wanted to escape but he wanted to be entertained with a minimum of literary convention a minimum aesthetic distance he wanted to be close to what he was reading about to have a little suspension of disbelief as possible to pretend indeed that literature was journalism that fiction was history of course the novelist fooled them at least a great one did the ordinary reader may have had the illusion that what he was reading was a kind of journalism a transcript of life as it was happening around him with the without modifying effects of literary form and imagination In fact the great Victorian novelist often created complexes of symbolic meaning that reach far deeper than the superficial pattern of social action suggested to the casual reader the novels of Dickens for example are full of symbolic images and situations suggesting such notion as the desperate isolation of individual the grotesque and eccentrics in Dickens character became almost norm suggesting that life is at atomistic and irrational and that the pattern of communication can never be real but it has been left for the modern criticism to investigate this aspect of victorian fiction the great majority of borrowers from the modis libraries and readers of serialized novels a magazine wanted to read about life as they thought they knew the impulse that makes modern television viewers so devoted to play the ordinary life dealing with people like themselves with whom they can identify themselves but liberated by plot from the dullness of life as they actually live it this impulse helped to create the english novel and to sustain its during its brilliant 19th century career that this indicate a gap between the demands of art and expectations of its audience need not surprise us such a gap is common place on in literary history the best victorian novels transcendent dead the requirements of audience and can be read by later generations for different and perhaps profound reason but the same can be said for the best elizabethan drama the requirements and expectations of a given audience can help to explain the rise and flourishing of a given literary form but cannot explain its true nature or value except the reference to ephemeral work produced by hack writers merely to satisfy the contemporary demand with the charles dickens 1812 to 70 I repeat with Charles Dickens 1812 to 70s journalism and melodrama are gathered into the novel to give it a new life and a new and important place in middle class entertainment if we learn something from the 18th century novelist especially Smollett 
He learnt even more from his own circumstances and observations, combining an extraordinary relish for the old, the colourful and the dramatic in urban life and in human character with keen eye from the change with the industrial revolution brought into England in his lifetime. An acute consciousness of his own lower middle class origin and the unhappy circumstances of his own childhood, which include his father's imprisonment for debt and his own much resented employment as a black mill factory as a youngster, and sentimentally humanitarian attitude towards human problems. Beginning as a little more than a comic journalism, he soon discovered his special gift as a novelist, gifts which enabled him to present to the delighted readers a story set in his own day or the recent past in which the vitality of the character, the enthusiastic sovereign of their physical environment and movement from the comedy to pathos and from the compassion to horror and sheer high spirit with which he rendered eccentric villains, unfortunate Hippocrates, social climber, non-veox riches, criminal, innocents, bureaucrats, exhibitionists, self-deceivers, roisters, and confident men, human oddities, oddities of all kinds, each with his own physical and moral individuality, and each involved in rich pathos of Interacting lives played out against social background, whose sight and sounds and smells were rendered with the vivid particularity in which all this is presented with the, uh, with an almost reckless prof- profusion. Dickens begin with a great sense of life and little sense of form, capturing the individual oddity and extravagant moment with remarkable skill and then making time as it were, until he could introduce another such oddity and other such moment. Sketches by Boz, 1836. Sketches by Boz, 1836, is likely journalism merely, but with the Pickwick Papers issued on monthly part in 1836 and 37. We can see him feeling his way from humorous journalism to something more. The full title is significant. The Posthumous Papers of Pickwick. Club containing a faithful record of the pre ambulations, perils, travels, adventures, and supporting transcriptions of the corresponding members. This reminds us not only the Pickwick papers were originally planned as a series of sketches to accompany a set of supporting print, but also of the picturesque tradition in which Dickens began his career as a novelist. Pickwick papers begin as a burlesque but soon moved into more substantial kind of picturesque comedy where the interested lies not only in a particular obscure incident but also and more significantly in the way in which given characters react to new kind of environment. Each of the characters soon developed his own moral, physical and emotional qualities an interest is kept by showing how these qualities reveal themselves in new and unexpected situations. The simplicity, benevolence and harmless egotism of Mr. Pickwick are placed in even more texting circumstances and denied characters who sets out in order to observe the world which he thinks he understands his face again and again by situation which affront all his assumptions threaten his status as a benevolent observer and lead him in the end. After the most violent experiences of the differences and interactability of the world of the other people, to retirement at the close circle of his friends, followers, dependents and on which he can confidently turn his benevolent observation. But the interest does not lie merely in our watching the behavior of Mr. Pickwick and his friends as they react to different environment. The characters themselves are drawn with lively humor and individual traits of Alfred Jingle or Sam Weller are pleasing and amusing in their own right. Further, in taking his characters through the various parts of England, Dickens is able to 
to give us a sense of the early 19th century social scene. A feeling of English town and country just before industrial revolu revolution changed its face to so startling in the life phase of the great coaching days before the railway put an end forever to the phase of English life. Everybody in the book travel and traveling means coaches and horses and perhaps most of all inns and in words, inns are focal points and where characters meet, way cross and different kind of conviviality can be illustrated. Moreover, throughout Pickwick papers, there runs a steady vein of incidental satire of electroneering method in the famous Etanville's election or political journalism in the two Adanville's editors and lawyers and the laws of social convention and innumerable other phases of English life. Caricatures which rich comic effect through which characters as Mrs. Leo Hunter, Mr. Newkins, Dodson and Fogg and so many more burlesque caricature, satire, comedy and presentation of the English scene. The panoramic view of life, these different spaces of the book are never fully drawn together. They do not always rise out of each other but exist side by side so that Pickwick may remain episodic, a bedside book to be taken up and put down at any point, a picturesque novel which stops simply because the author can think of no more to say. If Dickens moved on to profounder and better organized work, he never left behind him the qualities he demonstrated in Pickwick. He never lost his touch for burlesque or for satirical comedy. His feeling for the eccentric, his a sense for in and its symbolic as well as the literal crossing of the way. And there is another quality in this book which points towards to the later Dickens. In later part where Dickens bring Mr. Pickwick into the fleet prison and turns him perhaps unwittingly comic figure to saintly character presiding over a horse of the a wretched and persecuted, we get from the first time a glimpse of the tremendous well of sentimental compassion which Dickens was always able to draw on. How to reconcile the philosophical and something almost hysterical view of human suffering with his great gift as an ironist was always a major problem for Dickens and the failing apart of Pickwick at the end with the escape of its hero from touch of comic spirit and unconvincing conversion of Mr. Jingle as a symptom of deep Clivage in the author's own mind and attitude which was again and again to threaten the integrity of his novel. This was perhaps a Victorian dilemma. No other age had shown such strange combination of the critical and sentimental, though sometimes of the sort can be seen among some of the uh, 18th century, a novel more creed in the process of renouncing supernatural sanction demands the most rigorous intellectual apparatus if it is not to be forced to ground itself in the naive sentimentality when dealing with the perennial problem of the suffering and death. Dickens' intellectual apparatus was not of the strongest. He was, in a way, the most instinctive of all the great English novelists except Emily Bronte, and sentimentality was often his only way of handling difficult moral problems. This can be seen in the Nicholas Nickleby ish issued in monthly part 1838-39 to with the solution to be problem of the hero and his family come suddenly from the unmotivated benevolence of the charitable brother to casually meet characters. The novel is rich enough though not nearly as rich as some others of Dickens novel in characters whose portray has that fears individualizing quality that Dickens could achieve so well. From the savagely brilliant picture of Mr. and Mrs. Squeeze and whole atmosphere of Dorothy Dor Dor Boy's Hall of Mr. and Mrs. Kremils and their theatrical environment. The Menta Linus 
their canvits and such transient minor character as me sirs gregs by and but style but ralph nickleby is a villain out of melodrama and nicholas himself is a conventionally virtuous young man whose real purpose in the novel is to come into contact with other and more interesting character the unfortunate smike is a conventional exercise in the pathetic dickens brilliant in his ability to present the fact of human behavior in all their richness and individuality is so far from incapable of eliminating its sources or motives especially where the extremes of either malice or humility are concerned the central vision of human fate in nicholas nickleby if it exists at all is weak and unconvincing and certainly incapable of drawing together into a complex artistic whole of various seen so many themes significant in themselves in novel oliver twist published serially 1837-39 is the first of dickens novel to concentrate on specific social ill but is always with dickens the force of indictment falls most heavily on the individual who demonstrate the attack institution rather than on the institution on as such oliver twist bandai band bandai between work ha, <coughs> house on the one hand and benevolent production on the other with a third sinister alternative of a forcible adaptation into one of the criminal gangs of london exists not so much to be saved as to illustrate the different kind of environment into which innocent may fall the book is full of nightmare symbol of loss isolation and incar incar creation it is also portrayed gallery done in dickens best style together with a series of vividly etched pictures of physical location and single incidents it contains some great and memorable scene but the humanitarian feeling that in famous and novel is not sufficient to give in adequate form oliver's salvation remains oliver's salvation remains accidental and as come or on when because dickens had exhausted his ammunition much of what was said in nicholas nickleby could be said of the old curiosity shop 1842-41 powerful and brilliant though many of the episodes are death of little nell which reduced to tears the population of england and america and has become the standard example of dickens sentimentality and sentimentality with which expresses itself in an inflated embarrassing style which it's difficult to believe could ever have caused intelligent readers anything but acute discomfort barnaby root root 1841 is more controlled work and stra- and stranger one and in dickens first display to full of ability is discipline melodrama into a somber if not quite a tragic pattern and related individual eccentric in a great general atmosphere in which this seems somehow inevitable but it was with martin chuzzlewit 1848 to 44 that 43 to 44 that dickens first showed his real stature as a novelist though paradoxically enough on his first appearance in the usual monthly parts there was a sharp drop in the subscribers it was still pictures to in the structure and was begin like so many of the dickens novels without any clear idea of where he was going the full title is even more factuous then the long title has given pickwick and nicholas nickleby the life and adventures of martin chuzzlewit uh, his relatives friends and enemies comprising all his wills and his ways with his historical record of what he did and what he didn't showing moreover what inherited the family plate who came uh, in four and silver spoons who from the uh, wooden wooden ladles the central theme revolves around pig sniff and super hypocrite hypocrite who never admits the truth of his own intention even to himself and the novel is grimly ironical study of the 
effects of the greed on characters and the possibility of self knowledge as well as real knowledge of others for the first time dickens had taken a moral situation rather than a group of pictures to character and incident in his starting point and though his episodic technique and facts that he was feeling his way towards the plot as he wrote the book led him to dis uh, degrees frequently and to introduce many scenes and characters who have no direct or even direct relation to this nevertheless the theme does remain central and power of the a novel deprived from pitiless humor and with dickens pursues his investigation of the hypocrisies pretensions corruptions distortions to which men are liable if they are if they gear their ambitions wholly to the material aspect of civilization uh, in which prestige derives from the monetary wealth or in some other way surrenders their per- their personalities to an idol there are moments which of rich comedy in the book such as the scene where mr Pickney becomes drink drunk in Mrs. Todgers boarding house but they derive from permutations and combinations of the factors out of which the moral meaning of the book is constructed the relation between gentility and morality between virtue and appearances between in yeastian term a man's mask and his true self even the scene in america which dickens put in his sudden decision in the hope of increasing sale and which have often been criticized as an exercise are related to his central concern and relation between appearance and reality between moral pretensions and actual behavior between true worth and public esteem constitute the motivating force of the american incidents again however the positive moral base is flimsy and sentimental Tom Pinch represent innocence virtue fidelity in such a way as to make this virtue appear both unbelievable and uh, fatuous and though his relation with Pickney plays a significant part in the book by showing how wise can use virtue with virtuous innocence consent his pastoral affection of his sister Ruth done with that idolized eroticism with which dickens describes equally fraternal and sexual love is wholly unacceptable nevertheless in spite of these other faults in spite of the perhaps uh, facts that dickens produced a different book from that which he apparently uh, set out to write martin chuzzlewit represent an important stage in the dickens career and it shows him taking central moral situation and focal point of the novel this links him more clearly to the novel a uh, victorian novelist Thackeray on the one hand and George Eliot on the other anything he had yet written could have done in learning how to discipline his genius from the caricature comedy and irony to a moral vision of Dickens took his place among the Victorians as essential one of them yet he never lost his individuality his feeling for melodrama and his something irresponsible historic sense and his unique and un quenchable vitality these remained with him always to give the characteristic dickensian flavor to all his works uh, dombey and son 1846 to 48 joint richness of the character and incidents to unity of the moral purpose with a new maturity illustrating the drawing together by dickens of his variety various gifts by moral purpose is not of course meant a single di- didactic theme but concentration on the some central moral situation often deriving dickens from the author's awareness of the tension between private affection and the apparent demands of the commercial civilization in david copperfield 1849 to 50 autobiography has been subdued into art with remarkable skill the richness flexibility and strength of his novel give it a special place among dickens work here self pity is sublimited into the ironic observation as the novel follows the fortune of its hero from idyllic infancy through the powerful draw but stone period to his aunt 
short with protection and thens on the manhood and love with their consequences in emotion and action the sense of life individual and social operating with all its complexity and inevitability on the hero and his friends emerges persuasively there are inevitable dickens sentimentalities the fate of little emily david's relationship with dora but they pale beside the strength and vitality of the whole there is the clash between different way of life different strata of society each with its own ideal and gentility and worth come into conflict with each other and in the process of dickens explore once again relationship between convention and reality between public and private standard bleak house 1852 to 53 shows the same kind of strength as the two previous novels together with an ingenuity and plot contrivance and some touches of the pure melodrama but again is the power of the individual scene the skillfully produced atmosphere the concentration of the tragic irony of human ambition and fashion through the sheer accumulation of evidence as it were that make the novel dickens ending are often slick and unconvincing though ingenious and show the contrivance of happy ending and favored characters on a quite different level and probability from that which gives life to the novel as a whole but we accept this kind of convention because it is a superimposed slightly lightly on the essential novel and does not seem really to affect it the hard times 1854 dickens always keenly aware of the social situation around him turned his intention as morality and utility in industrialized and affect the possibilities of human happiness this novel is more of the simple fable than anything else that mature dickens wrote and names of the characters greg grime uh, mac mac chakam chill and bandobai sounds like a comic banyan but force of the novel comes into its juxtaposition of apparent apparent and real knowledge of the mechanical and imaginative and moments of the supreme irony where he see jup is forced to admit ignorance of what horse is because she cannot define it in strict dictionary term though she has lived the work with horse all her life and are much more than exercised in the a grim or bizarre bizarre or the self contradictory but revelations of the tragic inadequacy of rational schematization to scope the realities of human understanding and imaginative awareness the little dorrit 1855 to 57 great great expectations 1860 to 61 our mutual friend 1864 to 65 dickens achieved that almost careless maturity and shakespeare achieved in the last place yet these novels are far from flawless and the last of these specially has least normal coat of sentimentalities and a frigidity little dorrit present with somber power paradoxes of fate and fortunes while incidentally carrying the uh, share of social propaganda about prison conditions which is an element of nearly all of the novel great expectations flows with more subtle and more control than dickens anywhere else displayed aspects of the relation between a uh, gentility and morality and though it has melodramatic moment the miss have version theme there is no other of the novel where the characters and incidents are so perfectly subdued to the central moral vision from the opening scene with pip and escaped convince surely one of the most brilliant opening in the english fiction though the ambition and expectations and frustrations of the hero the iconic vision never falls pip seeks because a gentleman and wash his mouth forever and fl- flavors of his early life especially the encounter with convict why in fact is the convict a uh, hoof left and money with which pursue his gentle ambitions and supreme irony the convict to convince uh, that there is no higher reward than achievement of gentility the great ana ana anagnosis 
the recognition by Pip of the convict as the true author of his fortune shows Dickens at the very light of the genius, genius and the final working out of the action seems to full of complicated coincidences. That is not great matter for the real story has now been told and we are contented with whatever ingenuities of explanations and author present to us. Our mutual friend is most consistent presentation in all Dickens work of the effects of a financial and social ambition of character. The meaning is achieved both of the literal and complex symbol. The characters of a Mr. Boffin, for example, dust man's fortune and both the victim and many levels of the significance has that of the sinister bag and perfectly named Vengineering. Meanness and generosity are set aside by sight in the thousand different forms. The lemness hoisted in their own petard and determined to get their own back on society. Mr. Chwamblo and most Chemsier dwellers on the borderland of high society. The complacent bullying Potschnap with his pathetic daughter, these and many others are not only portraits in brilliant portrait gallery, but explorations and illuminations of the various ways in which fortune and character can be related. The heroine Lizzie Hagsman, poor but host, and she appears some magnificently rendered scene does not sustain adequately as a convincing character, and this is true of many of the upper class good character in this book. Virtue combines with the social position held on no interest for Dickens, and nor could we make the contented and virtuous who were in interesting. He was more concerned with those real, where aspirations towards social position could affect moral behavior. So our mutual friend himself is of no great interest. Yes, uh, Mr. Eugenie very burn and nor any of these characters who show personal, aristocratic and patriarchal virtue. Dickens had that largeness of genius and enabled him to waste more of his sentimentalities and melodrama than most other writers had their disposal altogether. There was an element of the ingenious mystery a writer in Dickens which developed as a result of example of uh, Wilkie Collins, his last novel, Unfinished, and was Mystery of Adrian Drote, 1870. High power thrilled, but still keep pretty guessing, and a tale of two cities, 1859. He wrote an intense historical novel centered on the French Revolution. Both these works, though, they displayed many of the characters Dickens' strength, were bypass of him, journalist, caricaturist, satirist from the beginning, and soon learned the sub Soon, these gift in the rendering of aspects of social situations in terms of human foibles and weakness and demands made by social conventions and relation between the social economic fabric of society and strength and vulnerability of individual. His vitality was enormous and he crowded his canvas with many more figures than the pattern of his story demanded out of sheer relish for the uh, vagaries of human nature. If the weakness of the philosophical equipment uh, prevent him from indicating any satisfactory moral base from which he contem um, contemplate the ultimate issue of human and thus led him into sentimentality and melodrama in order to cover up uh, this lack, if he was continuously producing uh, scripts and sketches and stories such as Christmas Carol, where pleased his contemporary readers by laying his kind of things on which uh, a trouble and if his solution to social problem went no further than suggesting that people simply stopped behaving cruelly. Let us remember that he did awaken the Victorian con consciousness on a great variety of subjects and a debtor's prison to pro private schools and novelists he possesses as a combination of the gift unknowing English novelists before or since. He had that joy in the variety of human character, and Chaucer and Shakespeare had to degree, shared by uh, none other than those, and both richness and pure comic 
and mentions an extraordinary gift of irony and caricature. He had a pressing sense and moral and social problem of his lay and genius and illuminating them through the presentation of character in action and always and invariably uh, he entertained. If Tennyson was the great prophet of the Victorian middle class, Dickens was great entertainer. Dickens was great entertainer. Like Tennyson, he met his audience halfway. He expected uh, their preconceptions uh, cashed in their emotional potentialities and yet into doing so he exposed their shame and conventions by hypocrisies with almost frightening violence. The norm of his art remained bourgeois and sentimental melodrama, but he transcended, he transcended its limitations through the power, versatility of his genius.